even though I know what happens next, even though I could immediately watch the next episode right now if I wanted to, the ending of Into Bedfellows Part 3 is infuriating. It's brilliant, and it's a pretty good way to ensure your show is going to get commissioned for another season, but it is so frustrating. This is the 26th episode of the fourth season of Cheers. It is the third and final part in the Strange Bedfellows series of episodes. And it's also the last episode of season four, of course, directed by the wonderful James Burroughs. And there will be spoilers from now as I talk about this episode. And I will not mention what happens in the next episode. I will not spoil it. But I have obviously right now just finished re-watching this episode. And as I said, even though I know what happens next, I still had that little pit in my stomach of thinking you can't leave it there. I cannot even imagine the agony of watching this on broadcast in the 1980s, having to wait, I'm assuming, about half a year for the next episode. That would be torture. Because the emotional relationship that we've built up with Sam and Diane is so beautiful and so magical and so infuriating. And to have this ending the way it does is just horrific but amazing at the same time. So I will go through the episode chronologically. There is really only one story in this episode. We do have a tiny little bit with Norm. It'll mention that when we get there. But for the most part, we are concluding the Strange Bedfellows part of this season. And it's quite clever, actually, because it starts off with Woody. And Woody is recording another message for his parents back in Hanover. This is something that happened in a previous episode. So it doesn't even seem that strange of a thing for him to be doing. But actually, he's recording a message that's actually recapping on what's happened. So if you have missed the previous episode, or maybe it's, you know, it it would have been a week since the last episode... So recapping it, we learn that Sam is still with Janet. Diane stormed out of cheers, vowing to never return. It's a really fun way to start things off. Then Norm comes in and we get our one and only Norm, I think, of this episode. He's still having issues with Rira's sister. This comes up a couple of times in this episode, but nothing other than just padding. But it works well enough. And then Diane comes in. Diane having, in the last episode, vowed never to return, she's come in to speak to Sam. And certainly I'm happy that she's back in Cheers, but she didn't give it much time. And then we get a scene that I just think is one of the most beautiful things to ever happen in Cheers, ever. And Diane is sitting at the bar. I think she's ordered a seltzer, and Carla comes up beside her, And she says she wants to apologise for the die job joke. And she wants to apologise for, and I quote, all the crummy things I've said to you over the years. And there's this kind of, this sense of anticipating a joke or something snarky that Carla is going to say. But apart from pointing out a couple of jokes she made at Diane's expense that actually she would quite like to keep. She doesn't want to apologise for those. It's it's so lovely. And we have this moment of friendship between Carla and Diane. And the reason for this, in my opinion, is because Carla sees that Sam and Janet don't belong together. And I think she's starting to realise that actually Sam and Diane are meant to be together. And I think she thinks that that's ultimately what's going to happen. Whether or not it does, I'm not going to say. But this is her her chance to try and make amends with Diane because she believes that actually she's going to be with Sam and that's the best scenario for everybody. And it's just such a, a beautiful, beautiful moment. We learn that Diane has got a job. She's a checkout clerk in a grocery store and she goes to Sam's office because she says that she has to make some phone calls. She's waiting for information about another job. And Woody goes in there after her and she confesses to Woody that she'd actually come to see Sam to apologise for eavesdropping because she felt bad about it. And (laughs) Sam and Janet are about to come into the room just as Woody leaves and Diane doesn't want to face Janet. So she hides under the desk and is obviously eavesdropping unintentionally again. And we have a very funny moment with Woody. But before that, Janet asks Sam 
quite quite plainly what his intentions are with her. And she kind of starts to hint that they need to become a little bit more serious because obviously she's in the public eye. People need to take her seriously. So she needs to be seen as taking her relationship seriously. And she's obviously putting Sam on the spot here, knowing what we know about Sam and how he responds to commitment it's not a great thing to do and Sam kind of brushes it off and manages to get out of the situation without giving a concrete answer. They leave the room, Janet leaves the room uh, and Woody comes in and Sam is there uh, and Woody asks Sam where Miss Chambers went <laughs> and, and Sam's confused because he doesn't know that Diane's under the desk. We the viewer can still see Diane under the desk of course and Woody's standing towards the back of the room and he sees Diane out of the corner of his eye and he he, he goes off on a, a tangent that's very woody. It's very believable without raising suspicion. Sam leaves, Woody crouches down and I, I wrote this quote down word for word because I genuinely laughed out loud when Woody said it. And he said to Diane, I covered for your eavesdropping this time, but you know, I think you have a real problem. Me saying it, not very funny. But Woody delivering that line to Diane while she's crouching under Sam's desk. It's just, it's so fun and and so well done. Then we have the very immature press conference. It's beautifully done. Very funny, but very juvenile. Because Janet and Sam are giving this press conference at Cheers. And Diane has gone along for, well, for the show, basically. I have to say, she looks gorgeous. She's wearing a beautiful yellow outfit with a big yellow hat, and she looks absolutely stunning. And because she had overheard Janet's question to Sam, she decides to ask Janet publicly what the future of her relationship with Sam is going to be like. And things get a little bit ridiculous when she starts to stick her tongue out to Sam. Sam starts to make faces at her. And bearing in mind there is press in the room and everybody can see this. And ultimately, Sam ends up basically walking her out of the bar. And she traps <laughs> she traps his tie in the door and he can't get out. And it's, it, it's so, so juvenile. And this is the stage they are in their relationship. There are various stages of Sam and Diane's relationship. There is the friendship. There is the hot, passionate, romantic side. There is the getting on well enough and behaving like adult side that we do occasionally see and then there is this bickering behaving like children side that does often crop up and this was obviously for Sam the worst time for that to happen but for Diane it just worked so perfectly and at the end of the day Janet says and this is a horrible horrible thing to say and if you look at the expressions on everybody else we have Carla and I think Cliff and and Norma there. I think Woody might have been there as well. But Janet said, and I quote, I'm crazy about a guy who's the worst thing in the world for me. What a horrible, disgusting thing to say to somebody. That's horrible to say to the person you're supposed to be in love with, but to also say that in front of other people, to say that that person is bad for you. That's vile. That's horrible. Fine, think it if you want. But that's a disgusting thing to say. And Carla asks Sam once she's left. She asks Sam if he's okay. And he says, I don't know, Carla. I think I screwed up my life. And Sam realizes that he's basically in love with two women. And he thinks Diane is no longer an option. And Janet has clearly just said he's bad for her. What on earth is Sam going to do? And then we have that ending. Beautiful, perfect, disgusting, horrific ending when Sam picks up the phone and somebody answers and he says, why don't we get married? Roll the end credits. I hate it. As I said, I know what happens next. And even when I know, I still, I feel this pit, this heaviness in my stomach as I feel sick, desperate for the answer. And I remember feeling this way even more so the first time I watched this episode, because obviously at that point, I I didn't know. I had no idea. And I just cannot imagine the agony. If anybody can remember watching this on broadcast, I'd love to know how you felt, because it is very frustrating. And as I said, a pretty good way of guaranteeing you're going to be commissioned for another season, because people need to find out the answer. So a beautiful way to end a brilliant episode. 
there are definitely some funny moments in this, but mostly it's a heartfelt look at two characters who had the chance to have everything together and because they're both children and stubborn, neither of them has anything that they really want. And I'll say no more. Heartbroken that the fourth season is over, but excited to be rewatching the fifth season. And I guess we'll talk more about this when I rewatch the next episode. Strange Bedfellows Part 3 ends on a, a pretty powerful note. <laughs> 